Good day, my friends. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. You can always visit us online at mymbi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you're learning so far. Today we are on day four of this week's Daily Torah series called Metzorah. Yesterday we continued our series with God's instructions on the law concerning leprous houses. Today our Torah portion continues with God's instructions on how to cleanse a leprous house. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Leviticus chapter 14 beginning in verse 39. In Leviticus chapter 14 verse 39 we read, And the priest shall come again on the seventh day, and look, and indeed, if the plague has spread on the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which is the plague, and they shall cast them into an unclean place outside the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped inside all around, and the dust that they scrape off they shall pour out in an unclean place outside the city. Then they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and plaster the house. In verse 43, Now if the plague comes back and breaks out in the house, after he has taken away the stones, after he has scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look. And indeed, if the plague has spread in the house, it is an active leprosy in the house. It is unclean. And he shall break down the house, its stones, its timber, and all the plaster of the house, and he shall carry them outside the city to an unclean place. Moreover, he who goes into the house at all, while it is shut up, shall be unclean until evening. And he who lies down in the house shall wash his clothes, and he who eats in the house shall wash his clothes. But if the priest comes in and examines it, and indeed the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. Now, my friends, if the mold, mildew, or fungus had become worse, the priest commanded that they take away the stones in which is the plague. They would be removed from the house. The interior stone of a home would commonly be coated with some kind of plaster. This would be scraped and disposed of. The house would then receive new mortar and plaster. If the infestation of mold, mildew, or fungus is chronic, the priest declares the house unclean. The house is then broken down and the remains are carried out of the city to an unclean place. If someone enters a quarantine house, they are unclean and must take the appropriate measures. By spiritual analogy, we can say that our homes can be infected with sin. When this is the case, we should not just continue to live as before. Radical changes must be made. Things may need to be removed and discarded. Furthermore, the work of the crucified and resurrected Messiah in all of its dimensions must be applied to the home with a sense of repentance and renewed dedication. If the priest determined that the plague was healed, the house was pronounced clean. Each of us needs to do whatever is necessary to clean our spiritual houses and remove anything that is a past sin and tear it down. Now let's turn to our half Torah portion in 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 8 and 9, continuing our story from yesterday. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 8, we read, And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. Now, my friends, the lepers discovered the deserted camp. They feasted and they hid valuable 
spoils. They were right to go and tell the king's household so that they would not somehow be blamed or caught up in a conspiracy theory and then a greater harm would befall them. And the lepers rightly, uh, rightly enjoyed the miracle God provided. But they also realized that the gift uh, gave them a responsibility to share it with others. They understood that to remain silent and to selfishly enjoy the blessings would be a sin. They had a responsibility to share the good news. My friends, we too, we cannot properly share the good news of Yeshua the Messiah unless we ourselves are enjoying it. Rejoice, my friends, and share the good news whenever and wherever you can. Now let's turn to our Brit Hadashah portion in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 20. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20, we read, Now when he, Yeshua, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Then in verse 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. The Pharisees questioned my friends uh, may have been asked with different intentions. Some were curious, others hostile. Yeshua's answer addresses both cases. The kingdom of God does not come with outward pomp or worldly grandeur. Instead, it bursts forth suddenly, and its signs are found in a different realm within hearts and lives. The kingdom is not about political power, but spiritual transformation. The kingdom of God was not about external observation, but an inward reality. Yeshua the Messiah was already among them, though not in the way they expected. Yeshua emphasized that the kingdom of God transcends mere external appearances. It resides within hearts, transforming lives and inviting all to participate in its spiritual reality. This is a reality many who lust after the pleasures of this world cannot comprehend. Their hearts and minds are closed. A veil covers them. But when his glorious coming appears, that veil will be lifted and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua is the Messiah. So my friends, let's end it here for today. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Pray for us in this message to go out. Pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah in their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes. Download the Daily Torah schedule. You can also order the Daily Torah series of books to follow along. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or donate button on the website. Tomorrow we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings and Shalom my friends.